Um, I'm going to begin, guys, by asking a question about the lovely Duncan Jones, because yes. I just met him and he's got such a passion for this project and a knowledge and enthusiasm. I mean, that must have really rubbed off on the whole kind of cast and crew when you're making a film, particularly that kind of creates a whole, u a whole new universe for us to inhabit. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, he's a very passionate guy and he was a fan of the game, so um, we're so lucky to have a director that's a fan of the game. Have, I mean, he had an incredible vision. And then, you know, what was amazing is that the people on the films, there were so many people that work on the film that had given up other jobs or taken less paying, you know, made less money doing this because they loved the game so much. And so you had this collective group of people that had this vested interest in making the film, which I think you can feel that energy. And it must be really cool watching this film back, perhaps sort of more so than usual, because it's it's all about the kind of landscape in this universe, and a lot of the sort of fights take place between CGI creations and humans. I mean, when you watch it back, is it almost like seeing it for the first time, as opposed to when you make a kind of drama? Yeah, for for sure. I mean, most jobs you sort of uh, you're shooting the final product. You know, they they edit it and then they put a score, a bit of music over it, and then they're, they're sort of done. But this is. You shoot it and then it's a two year process with all the computer stuff. And it comes yeah. out, yeah, so I couldn't imagine how it came out. But, <laughs> but Duncan had the vision the whole time and knew how it was gonna end up and he executed what he wanted. So did you shoot this quite a while ago then? This we did. Yeah, at least two years ago or something. Is it quite it difficult was. then when you're doing kind of press tours to just remember, because I guess you've got, obviously made movies since, so it must be quite difficult to go back to that moment and go, what was I doing when I was playing that role? I don't know, oddly enough with this film, it was such a, um, uh, important moment in my life and, and it was uh, so impactful that I, I remember quite a bit about it. It feels mm. it feels like a while ago but then it feels like it would just happen in some way. It must be nice as well because the kind of the whole experience of making this movie is kind of longer because you're sort of doing press now That's it true. kind of must sort of prolong the whole adventure in some ways. It does, it does, yeah. it does. <laughs> it makes it feel more like an epic adventure yeah. just being in it, absolutely. Yeah. So did you guys were you sort of gamers when you were younger? Or even even so now, do you ever sort of you ever sort of playing games at night? No, I wasn't. I no. wasn't much of a gamer. I didn't play at all. We didn't have one. My mate had Duck Hunt around the corner. Oh, right. Sean Malone had it, but uh, no, we're, I was outside mostly as a kid. My yeah. parents didn't want me around. But when you're in a movie like this, where you get to have kind of sword fights and you're wearing the armor and you're in a big mm. kind of field, I don't know if you were in a field, but you know, uh, it looked like you were. Um, does it kind of tap into that quite inherent playful nature we have? As because when we're kids, this is the sort of acting yeah. we want to do when we're older. It's that, and this is kind of brings up about the kind of world of make believe, I guess, which is part of the appeal of this industry. Without question, it's um, make believe was my favorite game growing up. Yeah. So this is yeah. this very elaborate world of it, and we're all playing it, and so it did. I, mean, I think that that's what was so amazing about making this film. It, it made me feel like a kid again in the best way. And I think everybody yeah. needs to get in yeah. touch with their child. Like self. And somebody makes lunch for you and you don't have to pay for it. Nice this bonus. is true. And yeah, it's yeah. kind of like your mom making lunch for you or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, conversely, you ever sort of in this big field, waving your arms around and just thinking, I we did it feel a bit silly. Yeah, well, all in sheds, actually. In sheds. No I feel you call it shed. It's, it's a sounds warehouse. Sick. A warehouse. Yeah. It was, it it's an old factory they turn into a studio. Okay, no, just shed. Is that like an Australian thing, shed? Yeah. Okay. Weird. It's a massive yeah. shed. Yeah. Over here, we just have sheds at the end of the garden. Yeah, that's what I think of it, too. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, so who were you actually fighting? Were they, were they using kind of stunt men to be, so, so they, you had something to kind of aim at and keep yeah. eye contact with? Oh, yeah. even more so, yes, it was. They were all, all of the orcs were played by real humans and and that's why it works, is that you, they didn't look like it when we were doing it. They had on blue pajamas with white balls and such all over them and these black dots all over their face. But but they were there and you were interacting with them and, and made all the difference in the world. Because you're sort of shade of green in this it's movie. True. Was that every morning? Did they have, I mean, was that added on afterwards or well, did you actually have to be painted I green painted, every day? I did it every morning every for morning. He was, yes, he, he <laughs> no. no, it was, a, it, uh, they, we were going to do it that way. And then luckily uh, for myself, because it would have been, you know, quite, for me. Um, they decided that t like the technology was such that it would be so much better to do it um, later because you could see her pores, you could see her sweat, you could yeah. see her if she felt cold and, and, um, and it just met, made it seem that much more real, so. Because Garona has one of the most kind of human narratives in this, in the sense that she's kind of caught between two cultures. She doesn't really know where she belongs, perhaps. I mean, I was wondering, was it easier to get into her to her head and into this kind of character when you have got kind of human themes to relate to? Because on paper, she is kind of an, an orc. So it's mm, kind of, yeah. yeah, I mean, for me, I, I found it really challenging because she was half orc, half human, and didn't know how I was quite going to play that and, <laughs> and be able to, um, you know, sell 
orc. <laughs> and so there was, a, but but yes, but that is at the at the end of the day, whether you're orc or human or wherever you are from in the world, you realize that people they experience pain the same way, happiness, love, and and so that does you, you, you there's humanity in it, and you and you find a way to connect. And did you create a backstory for her parentage? I mean, do you or do you just like to go what's on the page and what's on the script, or do you like to like dig into your character's past and and learn about where they've kind of come from? What, I do. What color was your mum? Yeah, I was wondering which way around it was. I, I, um, you know what? There is actually a story to this, okay. and I don't know if they're going to reveal it at some point. Honestly, oh. yeah, there is a bit of a backstory about this, okay. and yes, there's there's a backstory that you actually have that's part I of the game. Your I wasn't and, sure if it was um, an orc dad or... What would you say? I wasn't sure if it was an orc mother and a human I know, father well, we'll or, see, I yeah. think, maybe. I think maybe we'll discover that. Talk. I have things in my head. Yeah. I have thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!